changes Brandon Guffey supports. He wants to make sure what happened to his child doesn't happen to anyone else's. He's back from Washington tonight, and we asked him what it was like being in that hearing room yesterday. Bittersweet. I got emotional. Um, Senator Graham kicked off his comments with sharing Gavin's story. Um, so that brought some tears to my eyes. Um, and whenever all the tech CEOs came in, they had me standing at the front where they sit at with my son's picture in front of all the other parents. So that was very impactful. If you could have sat at one of those tables and gave, given testimony, what would you have wanted them to hear from you? I would have wanted them to hear that I consider them as big tobacco. They're aware of the harmful effects. They have the tools in place. They could make the changes. And instead of doing what's right, they're trying to hide it. For profit? Yes. They're putting profit over, over people. Almost each one of those CEOs said, we're better equipped to deal with this and figure out how best to protect children. When you heard them say that, what did you think? Why haven't you? I mean, I, I think it's ridiculous as we sit here and we've got AI coming. We've got quantum coming. We've got the next two big revolutions. And it's been 30 years and we haven't done anything to protect people online. Why do we think that we can be proactive with these other things coming? These tech companies do have, they are better equipped. They have the technology. They just refuse to use it. What progress might we see coming out of the legislature or the, the House or the Senate there in Washington? I, you know, the best hope would be to repeal Section 230. Um, or to reform it, to allow these companies to be held responsible. I don't believe that will happen. So if you don't get Section 230, is there other hope for legislation that there, would help? There's a bill called COSA, mm -hmm. um, which is the Kids Online Safety Act. We only need two more six uh, senators to sign on to the COSA bill before it has to be heard in the Senate. And then we worry about what it does in the House. But to just get it out of the Senate would be a huge accomplishment. When you're sitting in the room and you're sitting surrounded by other families who've been touched by, by all of this, uh, what's that like for you? Uh, how That's do you all the hardest connect? thing. Yeah. Um, and I deal with kids getting extorted daily. Um, it's become part of my life, but it's the hardest thing to know that these other families know the pain that I feel. And I tell people it's one thing to lose a child, it's another to know that your child chose to take their life. People say that it needs to fall on the parents, and I don't think parents can keep up. Unless even helicopter parents can't keep up. Um, and these things just happen so quickly. I want parents to understand what sextortion is. I want kids to understand that tomorrow needs you. And there's no mistake that you can make that's worth taking your life for. I, I think to myself, how hard is it for you to continually talk about this all the time? It's part of my grieving process. Um, you know, I had to go through therapy, EMDR therapy. Once I got through that, it's just become one of those things. And I had to change, look inward to myself as well. I don't worry about whether I get emotional whenever I talk now. Um, so... You know, my entire philosophy in life is don't anticipate, participate. And I tell people I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm putting one foot in front of another. As a freshman, I was able to get a law passed my first year. Um, and whenever the one year anniversary came and I look back, because I just felt like I'm struggling every day, it was amazing to see what we've accomplished. So I'm just continuing the same thing. I feel like I'll be where God wants me to be. You're not going to rest, are you? I will not. Not until the day I die.